Hello and welcome to today's video which will be the first of two covering the very commonly used performance improvement tool, the Seven Waste System. My name is Carl and I'm a business improvement greybeard. This first video on the Seven Waste will look at what the method methodology is for and how to get the most out of it as part of a disciplined approach to resolving lead time problems within businesses. The follow-up video will then review each of the seven wastes in detail, explaining how to recognise them, why their presence is problematic, what causes them, and finally, how best to go about reducing or eliminating them. Welcome to the Great Beard Academy, providing knowledge and advice to business leaders and business improvement specialists around the world. The seven waste methodology is an area of constant debate and argument within the business improvement community. Ever since a consultancy came up with the smart idea of expanding this to become the eight waste by adding the waste of human potential into the mix. I don't know if you've ever seen the film There's Something About Mary from back in the late 90s. Starred Cameron Diaz and Ben Stiller, highly recommended. Very funny movie, maybe not so uh, politically correct for this day and age, but still pretty funny. Anyway, at one point in the film, Ben Stiller's character gets stuck talking with a psychopath who, for some reason, shares his brilliant business idea. Having seen the video shop shelves stacked with fitness videos for 10 minute abs, perfect stomach abs in just 10 minutes a day, the psycho has this idea to launch a video called the nine minute abs. Who's going to buy a video for 10 minute abs when you can have them within nine minutes a day? Genius. That's a bit like how I feel about the eight ways. I was taught directly from the Kawasaki production system and the Toyota production system. The logic I was taught in terms of what the seven ways were their context and how to use them, centred entirely about the compression of lead time. They were part of a cascade analysis of what makes up every minute of elapsed time within a business activity. The logic would evolve along the lines of defining and measuring our lead time, then applying value added analysis to split that elapsed time into value added time preparation time and the remainder being the waste and then finally using the seven waste to categorize what the cause of any lack of progress is at any given moment within that lead time so at any given moment in time what's the reason why we're not adding value at this specific moment we can't measure the waste of human potential in minutes and seconds the same is true of any of the other potential dictionary definition wastes that we could have chosen to add, like wasted opportunity from working capital, wasted electricity, wasted materials. It's a different context. This is not what the seven wastes is for. So in terms of that context, the fit of the seven wastes is within that larger business improvement approach to improving lead time. Something that is pursued relentlessly within the Toyota production system because of its general beneficial effect. So first, we need to be clear on what we're looking at or what we need to improve. So where does the lead time that we're concerned with start and finish? Maybe we're interested in the whole lead time from order receipt to order dispatch, or maybe we're specifically interested in the internal processing lead time within our own department. Once we've set our terms of reference, we should ensure that we know how we're performing now. Measuring one lead time event probably isn't enough. We'll have a much richer understanding of our performance if we have collected a, a good volume of lead time data over time. Maybe we can then visualise our performance in terms of our 
mean lead time and also the level of variation within our lead time. The lead time compression approach is much more effective in addressing a mean lead time issue than a variation based one. If that's the problem that you're faced with, do check out our video on the resolution of delivery schedule achievement problems or delivery performance problems to see more on this ver variation problem front. If we are convinced that lead time compression is our main need, we should proceed by using the value added analysis. There's, there's a number of ways we can get the information we need to do this. We could start with a process flow chart and identify those process activity steps that include a value added activity. We could potentially walk the process, visiting each activity location, observing the time task takes or the size of the work queues before and after any value adding activity. If these exist, we could also append a tracker sheet to a few random jobs so that we can collect a record of exactly when they reach and leave each activity area. Another method we could use is to video some of the significant process activities and then study what's happening in the video. Or finally, we could use a more complex analytical tool like value stream mapping. With all, the ambition will be the same. We want to identify and quantify how much of our lead time is spent in adding value, how much is spent doing the essential things that are necessary to prepare to add value, and how much is left, our waste. Once we've completed our value analysis, we should then concentrate all of our efforts on understanding and addressing the waste. In terms of improvement effort, the, the value added analysis logic would say very clearly that we are much better served focusing our attentions on the things that are essentially non-events, the things that allow lead time delay or time to elapse but don't add one cent to the value of the product or service or bring it any closer to what the customer is paying for. Things like uh, queuing times, transport times, waiting times, and generally these are vast, relatively speaking. Common sense would say that it's much easier to avoid not doing something than to try to improve that physical activity of doing a thing. The seven waste system is specifically designed then to help us identify, categorize, quantify, and then make steps to eliminate these wastes within that lead time. So briefly introducing these, these seven waste categories themselves, we start off with overproduction. Overproduction is making any quantity of product over and above what we have a customer order to, to deliver. And there's, there's a number of reasons why that might happen. We may decide that for economic batch size reasons, we feel that we need to make a minimum quantity of something for it to be viable to make it. So we may receive an order for eight, but we decide it's not worth making eight, we may as well make 10. Another common reason why overproduction would exist is if we know that we've got quality problems within a production cycle. In those cases, what you'll quite often see is businesses adding a quantity on top. So we have an order quantity from the customer of 200, but we know we lose a few along the way. And so we make that up to 210 or 220, depending on how bad things are. These are problems in that they are spending time doing something that we don't have order coverage for. The second category of waste would be inventory. And again, this is a very common feature in waste. This is the time or the delay within the lead time of our production that's spent 
queuing in a pile of inventory. So we, we arrive at the next workstation and we find that there's already six jobs waiting to be done and we're at the back of a queue. That means that our specific job that we're interested in tracking the lead time of is now sitting doing nothing until it gets to the front of that queue of inventory. The more the inventory, and the higher the batch size in each job lot, the longer that delay. The next category of waste is transportation. And this is any time that we spend transporting the product. So if we have to move the product from workstation to workstation, or we have to move it into a stores or out of stores, or even from one site to another site, all of the time involved in that transportation is part of that lead time waste for our product. The next waste category would be process waste. And, uh, and often this would be one of the lower of the, the typical waste categories. The process waste is any excess time we spend processing our job. So if we're doing anything that isn't necessary within the terms of the contract, if we're doing additional tasks over and above what we have order coverage for, the time that's spent doing those processing activities uh, is, is another category of waste. One example of that that I've seen quite often is is companies really taking a care to make sure that their product looks good. And I've seen examples of that where it's counterproductive, where having finished the product or finished machining a product, it then would be polished or finished to make it look better, more, more aesthetically correct. And I've seen examples where when that product then gets to the next stage within the production cycle, they have to roughen up that surface because the next production step was an, an adhesive operation. So entirely counterproductive. But any time we spend doing additional processing activities that are not strictly necessary is a further waste. The next category of waste and often one of the most substantial is waiting time. So any time when the delivery of further value for our product is stopped because we're waiting for something. We're waiting for an answer. We've had a query with the, the customer because we couldn't interpret a drawing. The, the production is stopped or we're waiting for a, a particular tool to be free that's been used on another job. Anything at all that's, that's necessitating the product being stopped because of the reason of having to wait for something else to be done. So the, the next category of waste would be operator motion. Earlier we covered transportation, which was the time that spent moving the component or the job around. The operator motion is more concerned with any time where it's the operator that isn't doing the work because he's got to go and move to fetch a fixture or fetch some more parts or materials. At the lower level, that would also include any movement in the workstation. So if we have to turn around to pick up something or bend down, any of those movements or uh, walking trips, the time they take would form a, a significant part, part of the waste. And the final waste category is that which relates to any issues of poor quality. So we're specifically thinking here of the time that has to be spent either correcting problems on, on the product, reworking the product or replacing products that had to be scrapped. All of that elapsed time is not strictly necessary. It's not adding any value and therefore it, it forms another element of our waste. So overall here, my tip when, when trying to categorise the waste time within the lead time is to try to look at things from the perspective of the product or service that we're, we're delivering. So at any given moment or any segment within the measured time, 
what is the reason for the delay? Or what is the reason there's nothing happening with the product at this moment in time? Or what is the part or the operator waiting for? What's causing their delay? And that would make it much easier to determine which of those seven waste categories to, to apply. So once we've completed our analysis of the lead time, so we've measured the lead time, we've done our value added analysis, and then we've categorized all of those wastes into those seven categories of waste. We must of course not forget to go ahead and do something about this. The iterative nature of this value added and then seven waste logic though does make it really well suited to the basic visual analysis tools like pie charts and Pareto charts. If you're unfamiliar with those, there's, there's some examples here on the screen. So basically a pie chart is, is just taking a full circle and proportionally splitting that out to represent uh, pictorially the, the relative proportion of time spent on, in this case, value added, non-value added and waste. The Pareto charts is just a prioritized bar chart so we've produced a bar chart of each of the different ca uh, categories. So in the first example here, we have one bar for each of the seven wastes, and we've identified the volume that's been categorized into each of those seven wastes. What we also add with a Pareto graph is a rolling average line so that we see the rolling average percentage that each of those bars represent. So you're able to follow that red line to see what proportion of the total is represented by each of these. So in this case, the first is representing about 35% and the first two together are representing nearly 70% of all of our waste are within those first two categories. And similarly with the second one, in this case, we're looking at uh, where have we observed these wastes. So we've identified that the biggest waste is waiting time. And then we've taken those waiting times and said, where are we waiting? In front of which of the machines are we having these delays and suffering these delays? So these visualization methods make it really easy then to see where our problem is. So what kind of waste are we suffering and where are we suffering it? And that makes it relatively quick and easy to prioritize the areas that we're going to focus on and then evaluate the scale of the available prize in each area or category. So essentially what this is helping us do is identify the biggest piece of the biggest piece of our improvement opportunity. The categories in the seven ways and the fact that we've quantified each opportunity to the type of the delay in its location generally make the, the solution relatively obvious. So for example, if one of our biggest wastes is the time an operator spends walking to the stores to bring back uh, fixtures to use for the next stage of the job, we could consider moving the storage of those fixtures closer to the workplace or co-located in the workplace or, or operating area. If the operator is spending a large amount of time looking for, you know, your the, the 13 millimeter spanner, or, or wrench for our American friends that the whole team have to share, then consider having works, workstation specific tool racks holding all of the hand tools needed to complete the jobs that are being done at that workstation. And then look at locating all of those within easy and close reach. If that particular topic sounds interesting, then do look out for a video we'll be releasing soon on the topic of one of the other extremely effective business improvement methodologies called 5S. So an, an excellent methodology for workplace organization. So how to organize the ergonomics of a workstation or a working area to eliminate waste. So, once we've identified and prioritized each of the waste elimination opportunities, we, we capture these within a manageable plan 
allocate the necessary resources and then monitor our progress in, in lead time improvement. So in summary, the seven ways, and it definitely is seven, provides a key element of a disciplined approach to the compression of lead times. The, the seven ways plays a, a critical part in that iterative segmentation of lead time into value added, non-value added and waste, and then into a suite of relatively straightforward category, categories representing seven different causes of value stagnation. Once we've completed our analysis and quantified and prioritized our areas of opportunity, it's then relatively easy to start to plan and deliver the elimination or reduction of those wastes and, and reduce our overall lead time. The categories again make it pretty easy to determine what we could do to realize the improvement with obvious solutions available to most of those categories of waste. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Do remember that this is part one of two and a further video will be out very soon exploring those seven ways in more detail. That will help us to recognize each one, understand the kind of consequences that we will be suffering because of their existence and finally the best options available to us to resolve or reduce each of those waste types. Thanks for your time today and I look forward to seeing you again on our next video. We do hope you found today's video interesting and informative. If you did, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. This really helps in getting our videos prioritized and found. Thank you and ciao, the Great Beard Academy.